Okay, I've been spending some time working on the layout for this mounting plate. And you can see the challenge is there's nothing flat. We've got a pretty good recess in here to deal with. And of course it's a casting. So even if it looks flat, it really isn't. So the current plan <laughs> is, uh, you can see my layout. I'm going to use studs. I'm going to try to make 1032 studs. Uh, the casting is pretty thin, so I'll probably have to go all the way through and then leaving a uh, long enough um, screw length that I can do a nut on each side to pick up this plate. This is thicker here, all the way down to here. So I, we've got enough material here that I think I can just do a blind hole, drill and tap. That way you won't see it on the other side and just uh, probably a Loctite little stud in there. Same thing, 1032. And I think a nut will still fit flush enough in there. I mean, we may have a little gap, but that's okay. I mean, this, this, this little mounting studs will hold it off. That's just fine. So I think that's what we're going to do. <laughs> if you guys are ever looking for a good flashlight, these Nebo... Slide Kings. Can you see that? These things are awesome. <laughs> Super bright. but And it's got one heck of a magnet on the bottom. But here's the cool thing. Turn it that way so we don't blind you guys. But that is a really neat, just a you know, general purpose light. And it's rechargeable off of USB. And they're pretty reasonably priced, so just thought I'd share that. Okay, I got the studs in and the backing nuts, and I got them set about where they need to go. Come on, there we go. Top, bottom, there we go. Just gotta put the nuts on. Well, I think that's gonna work good. Now we can mount the VFD to the plate. All right, before we reinstall this drive on the South Bend lathe, let's just uh, take a minute to talk about what it is. This is actually a commercial drive. It's, it's an HVAC kind of specific drive. Um, kind of tailored to the air conditioning, um, heating and ventilation community. Um, they took out things that you would never use in an HVAC situation, and then they put in things that make it easier to use for HVAC. But it, it'll still work for other applications, okay? Uh, it's a commercial drive, uh, pretty pricey <laughs> um, compared to what's available now, you know, on... Amazon, eBay, what have you. This is a pretty expensive drive. Uh, one really nice thing is that the programming is done with plain language. Um, they do have the, the codes that go with that, but in most cases, <clears throat> it, will, it will actually just tell you what the parameter is, and the options for that parameter are usually pretty easy to understand. Most of the time, you don't even have to get the book out. And it does have a bunch of pre-programmed uh, options available, like in a macro or a wizard. So if you can just tell it, hey, I'm going to control a fan, you select that option, it'll plug in everything you need to control a fan or a pump or that kind of thing. So uh, very user-friendly. All right, so the simplest way to control a VFD, and not this one in particular, is to just use the keypad. Probably the worst way to control a VFD is to use the keypad, <laughs> okay? Um, usually, um, you know, you have to f um, fumble around to find the right button. Um, and in a panic situation, that could be bad. You know, you're trying to, I mean, here the off button is pretty clearly defined. But, uh, you know, still in a panic situation, having just a regular switch or a, or a kill switch uh, is so much better but uh, but yeah I mean you can control everything you want with the keypad if you want 
Um, I don't recommend that. The other way to control a drive is to hardwire everything. Have a remote start-stop switch, remote speed control, um, and there's other remote options. You can, like a, like a jog button, uh, reverse button, that kind of thing. So we'll look at that in a minute. The other way you can control a commercial drive is with communications. This drive has uh, Modbus and BACnet uh, serial communications built in. So you can actually, um, you know, through a two-wire um, comlink, you can actually control this drive. And that's probably the worst way to do it uh, because that's not always that reliable. The absolute best way to control a VFD is to hardwire the, uh, the start-stop and the speed control. And uh, let me take the cover off and I'll show you how I did that. I'm going to pop the display off. Okay. On a note on, and this is true with a lot of drives, you can remote mount the display. So if you look in the back here, this is just a regular Ethernet, uh, you know, patch type. Um, uh, what's that? RJ45, I think that is. <laughs> um, connector. And you can pop out this little adapter here. Let's see if I can do it without breaking it. There we go. So now I could just plug in an Ethernet cable, patch cable, and put this display almost anywhere. And they even have a mounting kit for these displays so you can put them in a panel. Okay. So that's a, a potentially another option on how to control it if you're if you're going to locate the drive, you know, <clears throat> out of arm's reach, okay? And you probably should on a machine tool because you don't want metal chips getting in in these things. All right, let's get this cover off. All right. Okay, so you can see we got quite a few connections available here. Now, what I did, originally I had this mounted on the wall, okay? And <laughs> you guys might recognize that. This is just a regular old nine pin serial type extension cable straight through, and I just bought like a 12 footer, it comes with a male and female, and I just cut it in half. So I got this end on the drive, and then I got the corresponding end over on the lathe. That way I can, I got a way to unplug, and if you gotta move the lathe or move the drive, you've got a way to easily disconnect it. And I also did that on the high voltage side. So here's the motor output. Uh, it's, a, it's a four conductor, because you gotta have a ground plus the three phases. So this is actually a, um, a generator extension cord, and I think this is a 12 gauge, okay? And same thing, I just bought a generator extension cord, I had a male by female, cut it in half, and I used the two connectors uh, for a quick connect. Okay, all right, so we've got three wires here. This is, this is the speed control potentiometer input and it just goes in the analog input number one um, and it uses the power supply built into the drive which in this case is a um, it's a 24 volt no 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 wait a second let me look here 10 volt okay so it has a it has a 10 volt output right here uh, for your analog uh, circuitry so I'm using the 10 volt output there's a common ground, okay, so those go across the potentiometer. We'll look at this in a second, and then the returning signal goes into analog input one. That gives me the speed control. And then this one has five available digital inputs that you can pre program for lots of different functions, okay. Um, and I'm going to go by memory here. I believe I'm using input number one as a forward start. Input 2 as a reverse start, and input 3 as a fixed speed um, uh, override. Okay. All right, let's go over to the lathe, and I'll show you what's on the other end of, this, of these connections. Okay, we're back at the lathe. So here's our controls here for this lathe. And I'm using the original drum switch, forward and reverse, and they're... We'll, we'll take these covers off in a second. So that actually starts and stops the drive through those connections. 
Here's the other end of that plug I was talking about. It comes up into here, okay? Um, the other thing it does, it hits a speed potentiometer and a jog button, okay? All right, let me pop these covers off. Oh, and there's also, down there, emergency stop. Okay, uh, this should go without saying, but in order to do this, you have to completely strip out all your original high voltage wiring. Um, in fact, all wiring, right? Because you want to get down to just the basic switches, okay? That was really easy to do on this lathe because it's an old lathe. The only thing it had was just a drum switch. It was very simple. On a newer, more modern lathe, you know, you could have reversing contactors, jogging contactors, uh, auxiliary downstream devices, and so forth. So it could get pretty complicated on a modern lathe. Uh, so um, that's where you'd want to make sure that you either have good ele electrical skills or, you know, leverage a buddy <laughs> that has those skills. Um, so this one, again, it was simple. Everything was removed as far as high voltage. The VFD and the right way to do a VFD, it should go, it's high voltage output to run the motor, it should go directly to the motor and your line incoming power, uh, you may go through like a disconnect or a fuse box or something like that, but it, it would go directly to the VFD. The only thing going to your controls would be the low voltage uh, controls only. Okay, all right. So, on our original drum switch, I, I only needed three wires. Okay, we have a common, and then uh, normally you'd have uh, probably this side connected to the motor and the, and the middle connected to the line power. Uh, when, you, when you do forward and reverse, uh, these, these contacts will flip-flop. You can see they got this little jumper wire here and another jumper wire here, okay? Um, and then in the center position, nothing's connected. So when we go to go to the forward mode, it's actually connecting this terminal because it's connecting over here through this jumper cable and and our common. Okay, when we go to reverse, then this these two end up connecting. So you'll have to do a little testing to figure out how to do that. But uh, that's just three wires right there. Okay, and then there's some splices in here. Um, you know, because I've got two different boxes here. And then there's our three wires for the uh, speed potentiometer, okay? Um, and we'll look at that on a drawing in a minute, okay? And then our jog switch was, in this case, was the most complicated because, uh, you know, some VFDs have a jog function programmable. Uh, this one does not. So what I had to do, this is a, this, push button has a double set of contacts. I'm using one set of contacts to actually start the drive in forward and then I'm using another set of contacts going to a separate input on the drive that forces it to a fixed speed and I just program that fixed speed for the lowest hertz that it'll run at which is about six hertz. Okay, So two things happen when you hit that jog button but it works great, okay? All right, so we'll take a look at the drawing and I'll show you how we hooked that up. Well, before we go there, <laughs> so one note on the, on the potentiometer, this is a 5,000 ohm or 5K potentiometer, which is probably the most common. You could probably use a 10K would be all right, but a 5K is usually the best. Um, your center terminal, let me see if I can get this, there we go. Your center terminal, which is the white wire, that's going to be your speed reference. And then the outer two terminals are going to be your voltage source. One will be a negative, one will be a positive. And depending on your potentiometer, you may have to flip-flop those outer two so that you can get the knob. <laughs> So, you know, clockwise is faster, counterclockwise is slower, okay? I think I had it backwards the first time I had to switch them. 
I was able to find my original wiring notes from when I set up the south bend. So here's what's happening at the lathe and how it's and how it's tied into the drive. Here's our book for the drive. So um, I know it looks like a lot, but if you take it line by line, it's actually not that hard to do, guys. Just doing a voiceover here, guys. Um, let me know down in the comments um, if you'd be interested in a separate uh, video going through the detail of how to do this control process. Um, I do have a couple other brands of VFDs. We could try it on different brands. Um, if there's enough interest, I'll go ahead and make a video. Just let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in. Okay, let's continue on. I'll put this up as a screenshot somewhere toward the end of the video as well. The heat sink is made on this drive, so it's a completely separate um, fixture. Uh, so the electronics are on the other side, and then so the only thing really exposed is the cooling fan. The all the other electronics are up in this upper section, and these are angle louvers, so you know it kind of resists stuff falling in from the top. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not completely sealed. They do make sealed versions. They have all kinds of versions of these, but uh, overall it's, it's uh, pretty well protected. There's plenty of room up here for the warm air to exhaust out. And this drive runs really cool anyways. I just did some minimal cable management because we don't know what the final decision is on this machine yet so yeah there we go let me um, plug it in and let's see if it works I temporarily relocated the uh, control panel which is the patch cord okay if you look right here I'm gonna adjust the speed we're not running but this is the speed request 20 Hertz 27 39, 49, 60 hertz, 70 hertz. Uh, 70 hertz is my max. I'm actually over speeding this motor a little bit, which you can do with the VFD. Okay. Now, because we have hardwire controls, if I, let's see if it'll run in hand. It should not run. Well, it does. <laughs> Okay, but if we run it in hand and we hit the e-stop, yeah, okay. So the e-stop will still stop it in hand. Okay, that's good. Release the e-stop. There we go. And then let's go back to auto. Okay. All right, let me zoom you back out. Let's try forward. All right, that looks good. Reverse. Okay. And our speed adjustment. Okay, let's go to stop. Try jog. I use that jog a lot. That's really handy. Okay. All right. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, we do have, you know, our normal speed adjustments we're on our intermediate um, drive pulley and then of course we got back gears also okay so we have additional speed adjustment there all right well that's pretty much it back up I still got to level the machine and I'm gonna move it just slightly this is gonna be its 
temporary permanent location for a while until we know what we're doing. All right, um, I'm going to do some extra credit um, on setting up the drive. So that's going to be uh, a separate part to this video. Probably a part two or a part B, something like that. Okay.